Hi guys and welcome to Reno Ready. In today's video we are going to be making an outdoor patio table. For the style and size of the table that we wanted, it was pretty impossible to find. Most tables seat four to six people, so finding one that was big enough for our space was not easy. We wanted to have the option of always having six chairs out, but where we could comfortably fit eight and maybe even ten people without it feeling really smushy. So we decided to do a custom table. This is an extremely popular style. You'll see it all over the place, whether it's indoor or outdoor. This application could be used for indoor or outdoor, just depending on what you want. So for this project, I'm not going to show you any dimensions or any measurements because it's always going to be different depending on the size of your table. So the first thing I did was lay out my border boards and my interior boards to get a good measurement for the end border pieces. I then cut my end border pieces. I found this is the easiest way to cut the end border pieces because you know the exact measurement and you don't have to guess. Sometimes the boards can be a little bit different, so this was the best way to do it because these are the boards I'm going to use in the end. Once I had my two end pieces, then I did the exact same thing. I put my boards in and then I measured. It's easier to measure from outside angle to outside angle, so that's why I did it this way. You don't need somebody to help you hold the tape measure on the inside corners because there's nothing to grab onto. Next, I sanded all the pieces and got them prepped for screwing them together. I used two part epoxy so that I didn't have to use any clamps to help me hold the pieces together before I screwed them. I then used a pocket hole jig and long screws to screw the corners all together. I then measured the inside and cut the inside border piece. You'll see what this is for in a minute. I did these on 45 degree angles so they screw together nicely and there's no end cuts. Then I put the pieces inside and I used the pocket hole screws to screw them back together. Next I took the boards that are going to be my inside boards and I slid them under so that I can get that gap. Next I screwed the 2x4 frame into the outside border frame. I did a whole bunch of screws all the way along so that it's nice and secure. You want it to be all the exact same level for when you put in your inside boards. After that was all screwed I measured the distance between the boards and cut 2x4s to go across. These 2x4s are what holds the final boards and the center board. Because the center board goes across differently, I needed to add some extra supports in there so that it can get screwed together in there. Next I measured my center board and put that in. Then I put one 2x4 on each end for the legs to screw into. For the legs, lay out two 4x4 pieces. The angle where the pieces meet is determined by the height of your table and the width of your table. You can see in this diagram. I found this to be the easiest way to measure the legs because it was all laid out. I could measure it right on the spot and then cut. Once you figure out the cross pattern for the legs, you can draw a line on it and start notching it out. I notched it out by setting the depth on my miter saw and then going over it multiple times. Once I snapped all the pieces off, then I took a chisel and cleaned up the inside. Next, I transferred the measurement to my other two 4x4s and then cut them. Once I had my pieces notched, I then put them together and then screwed them together. I then cut them to length. Then I figured out what the bottom width was going to be. I then cut a 2x6 2 inches longer so that there's a 1 inch overhang on each end. 
I routered the edges of this to make it nice and smooth, but you don't have to do that if you don't have a router. Next, I stood up the X and I added the 2x6 to the top. I made sure it was nice and flush all the way around and then I screwed it in. Once I had my two legs assembled, I then got ready for attaching it to the table. You're going to be putting carriage bolts through the legs and into the 2x4s that were put onto the tabletop. You're going to need to measure the size of the carriage bolt head and then drill out a hole that size. Next, drill a pilot hole through that so that the carriage bolt can go through. At this point, you might want somebody to give you a hand. Lift the tabletop up and attach the legs to it. Then drill a hole all the way through so the carriage bolt can go through and everything is nice and level. Tighten the carriage bolt down and now your legs are on your table. So now that the legs are on, you want to put on your slats. I don't have any footage of this because I was kind of in a rush to get it done for people coming over <laughs> and that kind of thing. Um, but it's pretty easy on how to put them on. Basically just measure between your center board that was already put on earlier and then cut all your boards to that length. Now if your table is smaller, you could probably get away with doing six foot or five foot fence boards and you don't even need to do that piece down the middle. So originally when I put the slats on top, I wanted to somehow screw them in from the bottom so that you saw no screw holes. And I decided to just drill the screws in through the top and then use some wood filler. I ended up deciding to go with more of a rustic look. So I took a belt sander and kind of went over it randomly to give it all these like random scuff marks and things like that. And then I wanted to stain it and varnish it to protect it. The great thing about this table is that you could paint it, you could stain it many different colors, you could varnish it, you could not varnish it, you could leave it raw. We actually left it alone uh, for a, quite a bit until we decided that we wanted to do the stain and varnish. I'm really happy we decided to stain the table darker. It really helped it pop from the deck and everything just turned out really, really nice. We decided to buy these really nice wicker club chairs for the table. We talked about maybe trying to make chairs, but we decided that was not cost effective at all by the time Jamie made six, if not more, chairs to match the table. The nice thing about club chairs too is they have a cushion, they're comfortable, everyone gets armrests, so if you're playing games or you're gonna be sitting out there for a while, no one's back or butt's gonna get sore. All right, everyone, thank you for watching. Make sure to comment down below, let us know what you think and any other sort of projects you guys want to see. And make sure you subscribe. We have a lot more outdoor projects, DIY videos coming up for you guys as we finish off our backyard space. Yes. <laughs>